look at the picture over here you will find that a book has been shown now it is common knowledge and you must be knowing that book occupies a certain amount of space that is if you keep a book at any place or even if you hold it in your hand it will occupy a certain amount of space and this is true not only for the book but for any matter any or every matter will occupy space around it so this space that is being occupied by an object is known as volume so what is the unit of volume the unit of volume is meter cube because conventionally the volume of a substance is found out by the product of its length breadth and thickness so since the units for length breadth and thickness are individually meters the si unit for volume will be meter cube now consider this picture we can consider this book to be made up of small particles in it and these small particles are molecules so we can say that this book is made up of molecules and in a similar manner every matter or all matter is made up of molecules and since this book or any matter occupies space the direct conclusion is that these molecules also occupy a certain amount of space so now let us consider two different kinds of materials of two different objects over here we are considering an iron weight and over here we are considering cotton balls now let us consider what the molecular arrangement of the iron weight will be as compared to that of cotton balls this diagram shows a schematic of what the molecular arrangement is in an iron weight as you can clearly see in an iron weight the molecules are very densely packed and in case of cotton balls the molecules are not as densely packed they are comparatively quite loosely packed so thus we can say for iron the molecules are closely or densely packed whereas in the case of the cotton balls the molecules are loosely packed now we consider same volume taken for both the iron weight as well as cotton or in other words we are considering iron weight and cotton that occupies the same amount of space that is equal or same volume so these schematics represent the same volume taken for iron as well as cotton let us consider that a unit volume or a volume of 1 meter cube has been taken for both iron as well as cotton now as you can see in case of iron these molecules are very closely or densely packed and in the case of cotton the molecules are loosely or sparsely packed so thus we can say that since these molecules are closely packed they have more mass why because more number of molecules are present in unit volume as compared to that of cotton where the molecules are loosely packed and that is why it has less mass thus we can say that iron has more mass per unit volume because in this case we have considered unit volume for both the substances iron as well as cotton and since the atoms or molecules in iron are closely packed as compared to that in cotton we can say that iron has more mass per unit volume now this mass per unit volume has a particular name which is known as density density mathematically is given by mass of a substance divided by its volume so what can we say about iron and cotton in this case since density is equal to mass and volume and in the previous case we found out that iron has more mass per unit volume than cotton because in both cases we had considered iron and cotton to be of 1 meter cube thus we can say that the density of iron is more than that the density of cotton why because volume remaining same 
if the mass increases the density increases and if the mass decreases then density also decreases thus the density of iron is more than the density of cotton so now let us find out what the unit of density is in si system the unit of mass is kg and the unit of volume is meter cube now we have seen that density is nothing but mass per unit volume which mathematically is given by mass upon volume thus we can say in terms of units that density is represented as kg divided by meter cube and this is the unit of density that is kg per meter cube rho the greek symbol is a symbol that is used to denote density in a similar manner considering the cgs units for mass and volume that is gram and centimeter cube we can find out the cgs unit for density which is nothing but gram upon centimeter cube equal to grams per centimeter cube now when i say that the density of iron is 7800 kg per meter cube what do you think this statement means at first it might seem quite abstract to you that i am defining neither the volume nor the mass but i am simply saying that the density of iron is 7800 kg per meter cube but you will be surprised to know that in doing so i am defining both the mass as well as the volume when i am saying that iron has a density of 7800 kg per meter cube it means that a cube of iron with dimensions 1 meter by 1 meter by 1 meter that is with a volume of 1 meter cube this particular cube of iron would weigh 7800 kg this is what the term density of iron is 7800 kgs per meter cube means so now let us consider three empty boxes or three empty cubes that have been taken the dimensions of these cubes are the same and their volumes are 1 meter cube 1 meter cube and 1 meter cube that is all these three cubes occupy the same amount of space and have the same volume now in the first cube water is being poured in the second cube petrol is being poured and in the third cube milk is being poured now i previously mentioned to you that all these three cubes have the same volume and they have been filled up to the same amount that is they have been filled up completely to the brim so we can say that in the first cube there is 1 meter cube of water in the second cube there is 1 meter cube of petrol and in the third cube there is 1 meter cube of milk now my question is do you think that these three cubes will weigh the same or would they be weighing different we find that they do not weigh the same the mass in the cube where water had been placed weighs 1000 kgs the mass of the cube where petrol was poured weighs 720 kgs whereas the mass where milk was poured the weight of that cube is 1035 kgs it weighs 1035 kgs so what does this signify since we had considered the volumes to be 1 meter cube and since we got their masses as 1000 720 and 1035 respectively we can say that the density of water is 1000 kg per meter cube the density of petrol is 720 kg per meter cube and the density of milk is 1035 or 1035 kg per meter cube so now i have another question for you over here i have taken the same volume of water as that of iron and the question is by how many times do you think that iron will be heavier than water the important consideration is that same volume in both cases have been considered and the question is 
by how much will iron be heavier than water now this quantity how much any substance is heavier than water has a particular name to it and that name is relative density which we find out for that particular substance as compared to water so how can we calculate relative density the relative density of any substance is the density of the substance divided by the density of water at 4 degrees celsius as you can see it has been highlighted it is the density of a substance in comparison with that of water at 4 degrees celsius it is important to note that the density of water is calculated at 4 degrees celsius and to that is compared the density of the substance which we are considering now in si system the unit of density is kg per meter cube and as you can see the relative density mathematically is expressed as a ratio in between two densities that is the density of the substance which you are comparing divided by the density of water so since it is a ratio of densities in both the numerator as well as the denominator relative density is a quantity which has no unit so now we try to find out the relative density of iron it will be given by the density of iron divided by the density of water at 4 degrees celsius so let us find out what these values are we have seen that the density of iron is 7800 kg per meter cube and the density of water at 4 degrees celsius is 1000 kg per meter cube so if i cancel out these two zeros because they are common in both the numerator and the denominator i get the relative density of iron is 7.8 thus we can say that the relative density of iron is 7.8 now what does this statement mean this statement means that iron is 7.8 times denser than water now if i consider equal volumes of both iron as well as water which i had initially considered the same volume and iron and water then this statement that iron is 7.8 times denser than water will have a more relatable meaning if the volumes are the same it would mean that the weight of iron is 7.8 times the weight of water or in other words for same volume of iron and water iron is 7.8 times heavier than water now let us talk and look at some fun facts what do you think is the densest element on this planet or in other words for which element on this planet do you think mass per unit volume is the highest let us find out there is an element known as osmium which is the naturally occurring most dense or the densest element on this planet osmium is represented by os and it has an atomic number 76 and an atomic weight of 190.23 and osmium is the densest element that is naturally occurring on this planet so how dense do you think osmium is osmium has a mind boggling density of around 23000 kg per meter cube what does this mean this means that if i consider a cube of osmium let's say that this is a cube of osmium and its dimensions are and the dimensions of this cube are 1 meter by 1 meter by 1 meter that is the volume of this cube is 1 meter cube then this cube would weigh 23000 kg quite a dense material don't you think so let us look at another fun fact the picture that you can see on the screen is the picture of the fastest car on the world that is the hennessy venom gt now what do you think is the material that the body is made is actually made of or in other words which material 
is the body of Hennessy Venom GT made of? Let us find out. Now, in order to construct this car, the body will have to be made from a, an object that is comparatively light or a substance that is comparatively light. Why? Because the car will be moving with a very high velocity, obviously because it is the fastest car in the world. And due to this, in order to enable this, the car will have to be light in weight. It cannot be too heavy because then it would be difficult to achieve the high velocity. So while constructing the car, the body of the car should be made of a material of comparatively low density so that for a given volume of the body, the mass of the car is less. Now no metal can be used to construct the body of the car because then the mass of the car would be more as the density of metals is more. So the body is constructed using a material known as carbon fiber. Carbon fiber is used to construct the body of the Hennessy Venom GT. Now this carbon fiber has a density that is very low as compared to the density of other materials. And yet carbon fiber is quite tough to withstand the high speeds of the car that it reaches. Do you want to know what is the maximum speed of the Hennessy Venom GT? Because it uses carbon fiber for its body, which is a comparatively less dense material, it is able to reach a mind boggling whooping speed of 435.31 kilometers per hour. Or in other words, in one hour, if this car travels at top speed, it will be able to cover 435.31 kilometers. And this is because the body of the car has been made from carbon fiber, which is a low density material as compared to other materials.